Welcome back everyone. You are looking at my Singer 403A. thought I would just make a short little video. I think it'll be short. Uh, on why when you're doing an overhaul for a machine, it's a good idea to, once you've gotten a lot of your major areas done, it's important not to forget the little things. So I'll show you. I'm going to zoom in here and you'll see this is this little uh, device down here is a thread guide and of course it's used to feed thread off of this spool pin up <coughs> for winding a bobbin. Now I removed this and if I zoom in you might be able to see it a little better. I've been cleaning the machine but before I can clean it, uh, I'm talking about the painted surface here, you really have to, you really want to remove items like this. I took this off. It has of course a screw. If I can there we go. You can see the little screw, set screw that, that is there. Uh, again, that's a sign that it was designed to, to be removed <laughs> if needed, uh, like so many things <clears throat> on vintage machines. And in order to fully clean underneath, it's, a, it's important to take this off. And the other reason is that in order to polish this piece, I had some light oxidation and old oil here, and it all came off beautifully with the metal polish, but you want to get underneath because underneath is uh, if you ever see any uh, any of the nickel plating that's lost uh, or you see any oxidation, it'll often be underneath. This one had some up top. Underneath, uh, I went ahead and cleaned and polished up and now it's back in place. And so I thought I would show you uh, another little guide here. This little piece up top. <clears throat> when you go to wind your bobbin, uh, this, this is a sort of a stop for it when you've got the bobbin all loaded. And uh, this piece also has a screw, so that's a pretty good clue that it's something you might want to, to look at. Again, it doesn't look major, but if you're going to do this correctly, why not take it off and we'll see what it looks like. Again, be taking care not to lose your screw there. And lo and behold, we have the ghost marks of where it has been. Now, what is back here? It could be old oil. It could be dirt. It could be nicotine. Um, or it could be, uh, if the paint is cracked or, or, or bubbled, you'll know you have some oxidation. I don't see that here. And on the back, you can see this piece here that I've, you know, I've got here. I'll go ahead and polish it while I have it off. That won't take very much, I don't believe. And you can see... Um, I can hold it in the right position. You can see again this uh, this staining. I don't think it's rust, but again, you want to get that off and polish it. So we'll get some metal polish there, and then I'll uh, take some of my hand cleaner. This is the hand cleaner I've showed you guys before. It's sold uh, very often in automotive parts stores because um, uh, when you're working on a car, you get your hands greasy. It's like a degreasing cleaner. It has lanolin in it. Uh, I have tested it. You always want to test anything you're using for cleaning to make sure that it doesn't cause any harm to the finish of your machine. So I'm just dabbing some of this on here again with cotton swab. Uh, you don't need to get it into, that's a threaded hole there into the base of the machine. But I'm just kind of going around and putting this here and, and it, will, um, it will help soften any of this stuff. And then while, I, <clears throat> while that's sitting, I will go ahead and get you guys aimed back down here. Got to pull back a little bit. It's a little too close up. And I'll take yet another cotton swab. And I'll take my little piece here. I'm very fortunate. Sometimes these pieces, the plating of nickel or chrome, whatever it is, will come off and you'll get some, literally some rust in the steel. I don't have that, but this is a good way to prevent this. You know, as you might say, well, who cares what look what it looks like on the back? It's not just the old oil. You really want to check it because, again, we don't always know where these machines have been stored. You know, was it stored in a in a shed somewhere? Was it exposed to moisture? And you want to be sure if this is going to be your machine or if you overhaul machines and you're wanting to uh, provide an overhaul service for someone, you want to be able to tell them, look, you know, I did it right. I I, I explored everything on the machine I could access, and and um, you know we've we've basically gotten gotten to all the different areas of the machine that that matter in terms of preservation and function and aesthetics too. Aesthetics are important, and that's why we clean the <clears throat> the body of the machine. 
and I'll even put a little polish on the screw here just to just for good measure it makes it easier to get whatever that old brown coating is on there it could who knows it's probably a combination of different things that I've been calling out um, so we'll go back to the body of the machine I have you know a little rag here in my hand uh, this is a fairly soft one if it's too soft you can get something that has a little bit more bite to it but you always want to err on the side of caution uh, I find that the paint finishes on these machines uh, you know you'll notice there are no decals on these machines uh, those that that Singer did in the late 50s there are new models that came out in colors like beige this is the, the light beige oyster white color um, I can't speak to the exact paint type that's on here all paints are vulnerable so you want to be real careful uh, if you use a harsh cleaner on it, you could end up, um, uh, you know, dulling the finish or somehow damaging the paint. Again, always start in an inconspicuous area. But this is this particular. I have Moto Masters hand cleaner. Uh, it does not. Wait a minute, that's the French version, I think. No, it is. Uh, this does not have pumice. We'll always remember. Uh, I know I go on and on about it, but it's very easy to grab something in a store when you're in a hurry and. You guys know when you go shopping for stuff these days, there's so many variations on products. Uh, it's it, it's just dizzying. You go in, you know, you go into a to any store looking for so many different things, and you have a lot of choices, which is that's kind of nice, you know. It's like, well, you got lots of choices. It also makes <laughs> making a decision uh, it takes a lot longer. Anyway, now you can see we've gotten all this off. I'll take the dry side of my cloth and I'll buff it. Uh, and again, this has a lanolin in it. Um, and so I think I'm going to be fine with that. I'm not going to put any wax here. And the paint's in good shape. Again, I just wanted to clean that. And now let's go back down here and we will uh, take our little uh, little stop. I, I, for lack of a better word, it's like a little bumper for the, for the bobbin uh, when you're winding a bobbin. <clears throat> And another cotton swab that will help me get out. I don't want to leave any of this stuff on here. I want to get it out. So that's why I'm extra careful. You guys have watched me when I've cleaned, when I've had to clean out like a bobbin case, which is very intricate. And I don't want to clog it up with stuff that's going to interfere later, uh, any kind of cleaner or polish when it dries. So you can see I'm taking, taking my cotton swab through here and just trying to pull out any, any excess uh, cleaners, polishes, they like, you know, they have a, a way of getting into uh, places you don't want them. And a place like this in the center, go ahead and go there because you'll find sometimes that oxidation, wow, look what I pulled off of there, <laughs> just by doing this. Oxidation sometimes likes to live on the edges of metal. Uh, and so you want to check the edges, the little, the little fine edges here, not just the main flat surfaces. Okay, well that was polish. The polish adds like a nice little sort of coating that helps seal it. Now before, what am I doing here? Before I go to put the screw in, this is just one drop of oil. That's sort of an ounce of prevention. You know, that way the next time, it, hopefully it will be easier to remove. And putting this back is pretty straightforward. Um, whoops. And if you're not sure, by the way, this thing is also adjustable. You can probably tell because it has a, an oval, sort of an oval, ooh, there it went. It has an oval slot. And um, so you can raise or lower this. I think I have a pretty good ballpark idea of where it was and I can always adjust it later. It's not difficult. I think this particular piece looks like I'm gonna need to take my screwdriver and kind of hold it as I put it in. Just want to get the screw going first and get this thing. You can see it wants to wiggle away from me. Uh, again, be patient with yourself, guys. Uh, it's important to be able to laugh at yourself when you're doing this. Uh, I've laughed at myself many times. And some of these machines that I've overhauled multiple times, like the 400s, I always know ahead of time there's going to be laughter and there's going to be uh, flying screws 
little set screw there. You've probably heard it bounce on the floor. So I was not, I was not paying attention to my own uh, little hint that I've been giving all of you. Okay, let's see what we can do to get this on here. Sometimes the towel I have underneath catches uh, things that go flying and sometimes it doesn't. All right, now let's get this into position. It's wiggling all over the place here. Oh, well, there's one way to do it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and so I've got, like I say, I've got the, the screw has been oiled and I'll get my fat hand out of the way here in a minute for you guys so you can actually see what's happening. You can see I've got the screw in and this of course is adjustable. So I'm gonna bring it back up. I think it was right up about here. When I go to do test the bobbin winder, if, if it's off, I can easily I can easily adjust it. It was designed to be adjustable, obviously. And it was designed to be removed, which I find so interesting. Like with so many of these old machines, they are just just amazing. Uh, how much thought went into, okay, how are we gonna get this serviced in the future? Not just, hey, it's a beautiful machine because it's new. So there you go, a little bit of a uh, little detail on uh, things that are designed to, be, to come apart. You wanna go in here, and again, these, these pieces that I have been talking about, it's very possible that they have been on this machine and never been removed since it left the factory, right? It's, you say, so what, Nobody, not a big deal. But again, this machine is, what is it? 65, almost 65 years old, uh, you know, it's time. I think it was time to go to, you know, get the pieces off uh, so you can polish them, right? And while you're at it, you clean underneath, you get the machine back, slowly back to how it would have been when some lucky person, and some person with some money, was able to buy this thing in 1956 and get it home. Thanks for watching, everybody.